Hi everyone, I'm Dana Matnock and I'm on the writing and research team for the women's ministry here at CFC. Today we're going to be answering a big question and that is, what is the gospel? My prayer is that after watching this video, you will have a better understanding of the gospel, that you will find peace and clarity, and you will feel more equipped to share the gospel with others. I pray that you'll be confident in your salvation and the steps you might need to take to claim it. So let's jump in with answering the question, what is the gospel? In Genesis 1, we see and are introduced to the perfect world that God created. Soon after, God declares that everything he's created is good. We see in Genesis 3 that Adam and Eve rebel. They disobey God and they destroy his perfect plan. Because of this, sin enters the world and that is referred to as the fall. In Romans 3.23 and 6.23, it pinpoints what that means for us. Because sin has entered the world and because of the fall, we now all fall short of the glory of God and the price we have to pay for our sin should be death. But God has given us a special gift through his son Jesus dying on the cross for our sins and if we accept him, and receive him and have faith in him, our gift is eternal life with him in heaven. Through all of this, Jesus rescues us, redeems us, and atones for our sin. And the gospel really means good news. It's good news that God created us. It's good news that he created us to be in fellowship with him. And even though sin broke that and broke our ability to be in fellowship with him, it can be restored through our faith in him. Jesus died to pay the price for our sins. But then he rose again and he proved that he was who he said he was, which was the son of God. I'm going to read Ephesians 2, 1 to 10, because this really lays it out really well for us. In Ephesians 2, it says, And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among who we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of our body and the mind, and we were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which, we, with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved." And raised up with him and seated us in with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. It is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God. It is not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So let's go ahead and summarize this a little bit. In verses 1 to 3, it's saying that in a life without Jesus, we are dead in our sin. We are by nature children of wrath. We are um, of the world, living out our passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of our body. We're in the world, of the world. We do what we want, when we want. We live to our own standards and the other standards that people make up for us. And we have a secular worldview. But in verses 4 to 6, there's hope. It says, but Jesus, because he is rich in mercy. And mercy means God's forgiveness and kindness that we don't deserve, that he shows us. And because he loves us so much, even though we were dead in our sin, the grace that he gives us allows us to be alive again in Christ. We deserve death, but once we accept him as our savior, we can receive the undeserved gift of eternal life. And in verses 7 to 10, to wrap it up, it says that he didn't do all of this just so we can enter heaven. He did this so we could show his immeasurable grace and kindness for others to see and for everyone else around us to experience. This is so we can make disciples of all nations. God calls us to that. So we can proclaim the gospel and make him known. This won't be from anything that we do on our own or on the basis of good deeds and climbing the ladder, but instead it's what he does through us and through our faith in him. It's amazing to me that he already knows, you know, how we are going to use our lives to glorify him. He's prepared that beforehand already. So amazing. And then if you go back in scripture and read Ephesians 1 right before that, you can see and understand all the spiritual blessings that are poured on us once we become believers in Christ. So through accepting him, we become holy, blameless, adopted, and redeemed. I want to give you a few tangible steps to accept Christ as your savior. If you want to receive Christ, you need to first admit that you are a sinner. Second, you need to believe that Jesus died for your sins and he paid the penalty for our sins on the cross. Third, turn away from your sin. Confess your belief in him and commit to following him. Commit to a life of following Christ. We must turn to him and trust to him in him alone for our salvation and place our faith in him. And this is a free gift that's available to everyone. 
no matter your past or whether you deem yourself worthy. I mean, there's so many people that I know that have hesitated to accept this gift and this relationship with Christ because they don't think they are perfect enough or they are you know, doing the right things in life. But that's the gift of it. Jesus takes the imperfect sinner, which is all of us. He takes the least of these and he washes us whiter than snow. He is anxiously awaiting our relationship with you, with all of us. He desires our heart. He desires to be near to us. And he's ready for you. He's ready for you to take those steps. I just want to encourage you and to kind of express an urgency here in this decision because it matters and it matters now. Jesus is the hope that we need in this broken world and this world is broken and he is our only hope. You could try to find hope in any other thing, in success, in social media, in, you know, people around you. And there's a place for all of that, but none of that will give you the hope that we can have in Jesus Christ. If you want to begin living your life for Jesus, um, there's a loving, forgiving Christ waiting to hear from you. Call out to him, confess your sins, turn away from your sin, and trust in Christ, in Christ alone to receive your salvation. And you know, this is not a journey that we are meant to be on alone. If you have made the decision to follow Christ, the next step of that is to be um, in community with other believers. Connect with other people. Connect with somebody who also believes in Christ so you can walk the journey together, so that you can support one another, lift one, each, one another up. We aren't meant to do life alone. If you have questions about any of this, please feel free to reach out to Mandy or me or Pastor Bobby or anyone on the team here at CFC because we would love to chat with you more. I'm so grateful that you took the time to listen today and we are praying for you.